from Lakeside, it's Harvey Hudson's Passing Parade for two hours. Hello everybody, here it is Saturday again, and from 9 this morning until 11, Harvey Hudson's Passing Parade. It's a live show from Lakeside. Where in Lakeside, Bill James? Lakeside Town Center, Harvey Hudson. Lakeside is a special place. It's not just another neighborhood. It, people that lived in Lakeside thought it was their own little town, and they still do, and it's coming back. It is a haven for small, independent businesses. Little businesses where mom and pop would have it, and it's all up and down here and growing all the time. It's that kind of neighborhood in Lakeside. It's lovely. Lakeside people are, are, are good people, you know, down, down to earth, grassroots type people. And then uh, I like Lakeside. In all the years I've been here, I've only maybe had two people that when they walk in, I grit my teeth, but the rest of them, I just love them to death. They're good people. It's small town Americana. It's it really is. I, that's that's the way I think I would describe Lakeside, and it's it's not a negative thing, in my estimation at all. It's a strength. It's just a wonderful place to live, work, shop, and have recreation. Lakeside has its roots in recreation. To appreciate the history of the neighborhood, you have to turn back the clock to the 1890s. All cities were expanding out along spokes in the late 19th century, uh, building things that came to be called streetcar suburbs. And typically, there were streetcars that ran out along these lines. You didn't see tremendous infill between the spokes. You saw neighborhoods that were at the end of a spoke. In the case of Lakeside, however, it really was the Lakeside Wheel Club. The Lakeside Wheel Club was an escape from the city. It was a resort that Lewis Ginter built, and it was a chance for uh, men and women to, to get out of the hustle and bustle of the city and to enjoy country life. Uh, I guess a more genteel sort of life. Um, the men would ride their big wheel bicycles out here, and the women would bring the, take the trolley, and they would enjoy lemonade and ice cream on the veranda. Lewis Ginter uh, was in my estimation, a genius. He, he really was a man uh, before his time. He had vision. It's just amazing what was here. Uh, not only a, a bicycle club, but also a bowling alley, a golf course, a zoo, uh, just all these different things. It just sounds like sort of the Disney world of its time right here on Lakeside Avenue. Bicycling was just a really big hobby then. People could get away from the city and the, the um, fumes from the factories. Going out to the suburbs was, was a thing to do, and they had trolley lines to Lakeside, to West Hampton Lake, where the University of Richmond is now, to Forest Hill Park, to Idlewild, and we were one of those. It was just a day of, of fun in the country. Though the automobiles signaled the end of the bicycle craze, the days of fun in the country continued at what became the Jefferson Lakeside Country Club. Ginter's nine-hole golf course, the first in the Richmond area, was expanded to 18 holes by famed golf course designer Donald Ross and is still being played today. The ruins of the zoo, which was reported to be comparable to New York's Central Park, stand as reminders of a bygone era. Lewis Ginter died in, I believe, the late 1890s, 
And so after his death, his niece, Grace Arents, actually purchased the property here that is now Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden. And for a very long time, um, it, it was not developed. I mean, it was a children's hospital for a while, and then she lived here for a while. But she also gave life rights to a friend of hers to live here, uh, Mary Garland Smith. And Mary Garland Smith lived to be over 100 years old. So you can imagine for a very long time this property um, just was not uh, really you know, used or developed. And um, I think that a lot of people really forgot about it and forgot about Grace Arendt's will and its stipulation that the property become a botanical garden named in honor of her uncle. Uh, it really took a group of concerned citizens uh, to band together to make sure that that will was uh, uh, followed uh, through on and uh, Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden was then formed in the uh, 1980s. Growing up in Lakeside was like living in a village uh, where you really did know everyone, where everyone had common values. We all kind of had shared experiences, enjoyed the same things, and would help each other out when someone needed helping out. Uh, you could count on that because of the permanency of the neighborhood. Folks were there, had been there, weren't going anywhere, and you know you were safe. I moved to Lakeside area, uh, to live in Lakeside area in 1958, so it's been a very long time. Basically the street until the 50s was dirt or either gravel, there was no real, real pavement. Uh, it, it, wasn't, it was a, you know, like a, we were in the boondocks, I mean, you know, we were a million miles away, you know, and, and thanks to a lot of farms, where, you know, and, and things were entirely different the way or today, I mean, you really have to go you know, halfway to Charlottesville to have the same feeling that it used to be just in the 50 right here on Lakeside Avenue. And uh, I, I think that uh, uh, that that feeling, it, it still remains because, you know, you got Lakeside there is a corridor with shops, but one block one way or the other, it's all homes. It's almost like a city in itself. In fact, back in 1951, some residents did push for incorporation as an independent town, but the plan didn't gain traction. Still, Lakeside retains that small town flavor. It was a fairly self-contained uh, geography. In other words, it kind of ran from Bryan Park out maybe to Laurel and then on Staples Mill over to Brook, roughly. Uh, and I think that was something up to everybody's own decision making as to what they thought it was. But that was, that's what it was for me. And living at Woodrow Terrace and, and Hilliard Road, I was right in the middle of that geography. So for me, I was in the center of Lakeside, uh, where I grew up. And, and the, uh, it was a fairly uh, neighborly kind of a thing. Uh, no monster homes, but, but nobody uh, struggling either. It was a good, solid, middle class neighborhood. Uh, all had a uh, nice camaraderie, a good neighborhood spirit. Um, it's pretty self-contained, you know. We really didn't have to venture outside of the neighborhood. You could go from one end to the other on a bike in about, uh, what, 20 minutes and, and, and have it covered. Uh, and all of your needs were met there. I, I so much remember uh, my days as in, in youth uh, of being able to do just about everything I needed to have done in Lakeside. Well, to be a lakesider is, is a special term. Uh, it kind of connotes that uh, you're part of that community and that you are proud of being part of that community and that you'll do things for that community to make it better. The lakeside spirit of volunteerism has a long history of bettering the community. From the Volunteer Rescue Squad, in operation since 1958, to Fire Station Number 5, the lakeside landmark with a quirky beginning, lakesiders always prove themselves to be resourceful. I was raised across the street from where the uh, Lakeside Fire Station is now. When I was growing up, it was Lakeside Presbyterian Church. And, uh, Back about 1940 or 41, they built a new church up on Hermitage Road, a brick church. And the county bought the old church 
and uh, they made a, a fire station out of it. I went to church over there when I was a little boy before the fire station was there. A lot of people thought it was funny. They couldn't believe at first they was going to take the old church and make a fire station out of it, but it worked out real good. We had the pews and all in there. They just took all the stuff out and put the big doors in front and the cement floor. And my daddy was one of the first ones that joined over to be a volunteer. They had 25 volunteers. And uh, he uh, was a volunteer for quite a few years. And then uh, he went on as a paid man. But uh, those people were really dedicated back in those days. Uh, when you hear that siren go off and blow on a tall pole, you can see them running from everywhere coming to that station, especially on Saturday and Sunday when they were off from work. One uh, Saturday, Jesse Pate was over there, and he was taking the writing down the calls. All the equipment was out on a call, so they had a little hedge row fire down on a you know, Hermitage Road down that, close to Kent Street. and. Uh, Jesse Pate took an Indian tank, was a little tank of water that we used to fight field fires and wood fires. He put it in his car and he went down there and he, he got out and was strapping it to his back and the lady said, don't get excited, don't get excited. The fire department's on the way. He said, lady, I am the fire department. <laughs> she really got nervous then. Everybody loved Lakeside that lived there back in those days, and people were friendly and really close and helped each other, really helped each other. If somebody had a problem, it'd be, the neighborhood would be there to help them. I think that there's definitely a, um, a spirit of volunteerism uh, here in the Lakeside area, and I think we see that definitely at Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden. In fact, a lot of the community leaders in the Lakeside area do volunteer here. And so it all really does work together. Um, you know, it may just be that spirit of community, the, the feeling of working together to make things better and more beautiful um, that's motivating people. Lakeside is it's an entering suburb for the county, which is a little bit unique. I think the, a lot of the other areas in the county are very suburbanized and were developed later. So I think it has some roots and some history. And I think a lot of the past is really still here and in, in the Lakeside community. And I think that's been important to them and they've tried to stay rooted in their history, but they're not blind to the fact that you, know, you kind of need to blend the old with the new. Well, without change, you, have, you don't have a community that can survive. And that's what's happening in Lakeside. It is changing, but it's still staying the same. There's lots of that same old community spirit that used to be here long before I ever came to live here or work here. But now there's this new excitement um, that makes the community feel like it's still growing uh, and that it still has a, a future ahead of it. Before, I think for a while, they, they were a little bit, I don't want to say depressed, but they felt like nothing was happening here. There were stores that were closing up and buildings were empty and the post office pulled out and their only grocery store left. But now what's happening is that in all those empty spaces, there are churches and new shops and, and uh, consignment stores and they're selling a little bit of everything, food, clothing, their boutiques. Uh, there's hairdressers now. They, these are things that didn't exist before in the Lakeside area. So it's given the neighborhood a, a new life. It really has. It's, it's opened up the world to them. And it's almost like you can smell the excitement now there. People are coming out and they're planting. They're putting flowers along the side of the street. I, when I first got here, it was never like that. I don't know. The neighborhood is just growing and, and blooming. Well, we are proud of Lakeside. And we want it to be a gateway to the botanical garden. When people come off of the highway, to, to go to Lewis Ginner, we want them to see a nice, vibrant, well cared for, lively strip along here. And I do feel that people are enthusiastic about what they're doing, and it's contagious. 
when I uh, started to look to buy a house, I realized that, uh, gee, Lakeside, it's, it's kind of working class, uh, just my style, plus it's so centrally located. It's right in the middle of town, and yet it's kind of separated out. It doesn't have the hubbub of, of being so close to town. It's very crafty, kind of guildy. It, it has a sense to it of, well, actually producing something, actually doing something. And I think that's what Lakeside Avenue uh, has going for it. There's a lot of people doing stuff. There's a lot of people making stuff and, uh, you know, uh, repairing things and, and not just store stores, you know, that, that people stand behind the counter and wait for you to come in and spend your money. And I think that's the sense of Lakeside Avenue is a, is a, is a real productive kind of, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say blue collar just because I have a blue collar, but, but uh, more regular people just getting the job done. And that's, and that's what I, I sense when I drive down like that avenue. People are actually working, they're making a living, uh, working with each other, getting to know their, 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 their neighbors and, and things like that. You could have gone out along any of these growth corridors uh, earlier in the uh, century, early in the 20th century, and you would have found nice independent businesses like you find at Lakeside now. Those are gone uh, because big money came in and invested in and displaced them. So in some ways, we're lucky that the other corridors uh, were there. The difference for Lakeside, of course, is that if you get out beyond Lewis Ginter, you sort of you don't have immediate connectivity with the next thing out. Whereas if you look at any other of the major spokes, Broad Street, uh, Chamberlain, uh, Hall Street, they all continued to connect. And it's those connections that brought much more development along those corridors and made them the magnet for big investment post-World War II era. So in a way, Lakeside was preserved by its disadvantages uh, in that it was not an ideal corridor for the post-World War II retail. It was a great corridor for pre-World War II retail. But fortunately, because of that stable working class neighborhood, it, once it started, it never really declined. That stability there, I think, is what has kept Lakeside frozen in time just a little bit, but also kept it viable. When you come to the Lakeside area, you really see things that you just can't find anywhere else. And, and that's really special and, and really exciting. And I think that that's gotten people's attention. I think it's drawing them to this area. They realize that there's this gem, you know, this jewel right here that we have in Lakeside, a very special and unique character. And um, I think that there's a sense that we really want to preserve that. But we also want to share that with as many people as we can. One lakeside treasure that has been preserved and is being shared is the former Hermitage Country Club, now Belmont Golf Course and Recreation Center. Hermitage Country Club had a, a nine hole golf course down in, in Richmond and they rebuilt out here in 1917 for uh, the 18 hole golf course. Um, they were able to establish themselves as a prominent golf course in, in the Richmond area. They had the Richmond Open in 1945 and 1946 which led into a sanctioning of the PGA Championship, which was played here in 1949. And our family photography business, uh, 1949 was a big year for us. Uh, we covered the major national PGA that came to Hermitage and have, have some wonderful photographs of the crowds that attended that event. And uh, appropriately, Sam Snead won the tournament for Virginia Boy. Uh, the crowds were, were fun to look at. Everybody's wearing hats, a lot of folks are wearing ties. They gather around the greens and watch the uh, pros come on in. Uh, it was obviously a special occasion. It's part of the philosophy of the county to keep historical sites uh, active and open to the public here in, in the county for citizens to use. And fortunately for us, you know, Hermitage had decided to expand their operations back in the early 70s and we were able to purchase the property back in 1977 and turn the country club into a, a public recreation facility, public golf course, public tennis courts as well as a public recreation center and uh, keep it open with some historical content as well for, for citizens to enjoy for years to come. Lakeside is, is very fortunate to have, have Belmont Golf Course here. Across the street, on the other side of Lakeside Avenue, you've got Jefferson Lakeside Country Club. And then on the other side of, of Lakeside Avenue also, you have Lewis Ginter. So you, you can't go to too many communities that will offer uh, two top quality golf courses as well as a, uh, a site for enjoyment of nature. Uh, you, just, you just don't find that anywhere. The county has been investing in the lakeside area for a number of years 
And it, it all started with uh, this first revitalization effort in the county was this 1995 enhancement plan for the Lakeside Avenue corridor. And out of that plan came the recommendations for a drainage and roadway project for Lakeside Avenue. And the county invested uh, close to $4 million uh, in that project. And then uh, the Enterprise Zone program came along in 2004 and it brought state and local incentives for businesses to invest in their properties. Back in the mid-1990s, uh, the community maintenance program was started in Lakeside and really resulted in property improvement. And uh, there's community cleanups that uh, are held a couple of times a year where citizens can put out all their trash and debris and help to clean up their properties. We have volunteer assistance programs that go on in the adjacent neighborhoods. And the latest investment is a brand new fire station, fire station number five. And that certainly helps to protect all the investment. And the end result is, is there's been tremendous progress in revitalizing this area. VCU is uh, interested in the corridor as well and did a study. Uh, they did a student project here. Uh, they worked with one of our staff planners in the Department of Community Revitalization and they came up with some wonderful recommendations and they worked very closely with the business association and the business owners and that, that got the business community excited again um, uh, about the potential for the area. We started the class with a tour of the business district and I remember that thinking well this is kind of this is kind of neat it's not like any other place. And I think what our plan does is kind of serve as a road map for Lakeside Avenue to help them move it along. Uh, we, we took a group of, of largely independent, fiercely independent business people and said, here's our roadmap. This is our best guess in the fall of 2007 for a way for you to move forward. Uh, it's important for you to make it happen. And so it's the business group, it's in Rico County, hiring somebody to kind of oversee the effort and, and that's what will spell success in this program. You know, if we had done this 25 years ago, um, people weren't ready to look back at that scale and say, wow, there's something great about that. People had, you know, 25 years ago, people were in love with a shopping mall. People were in love with size. To some degree, they still are, but now there's a sizable group within society that's saying, we'll spend a little bit more time. We'll spend a little bit more money to get something other than the lowest price the personal service, the knowing who the customers are, they're really having products and services that those people want. As that group has grown, it's become possible for Lakeside to, you know, to continue and get a new lease on life almost. Lakeside Avenue businesses saw the rise and fall of Azalea Mall. <laughs> you know, everybody thought that when Azalea Mall came in here, that would be the death of the retailing community like this. We've not grown fast, but we've grown steady over the years. One of the things that I think is keeping this, this neighborhood alive and the, the business strip alive is that we do have continuity. We do have some businesses that have been here for a long time, and then we're getting new exciting businesses to come into the uh, fold too, and that, that makes for a lot of energy, a lot of creative energy. Roy's open in 61 by David Nudley. Uh, we love our clientele. Our customers are great. Uh, they tell us stories about their family and when their father brought them here and now they're bringing their grandchildren here. It's wonderful to see the generation grow and grow it. I have a double meat with ketchup, a barbecue with slaw, two fries and a doctor. Thank you, Mike. Have a good day. It gets very busy. We wait on one customer at a time. We try to give them the best satisfaction we can. Uh, they wait patiently, and we give them the very best service Lakeside can provide, and they keep on coming, rain or shine. Ever since 1961, I've been coming here. Well, the food is good, what they ain't see? And, uh, and uh, that's the main thing. That's why everybody keeps coming back. That's why I've been here so long. In the end, it's, it's really local people and then a couple of key businesses that we call destination businesses that bring people in. Somebody may drive five or ten miles for a Roy's Big Burger, but you know if there's a, a chain drugstore, they're, they're going to go to the one that's closest to their house. They're not going to seek it out. And Lakeside Avenue has a couple of businesses like that that punctuate it along the corridor. 
Another lakeside icon is the Hub. Built in 1948 and named for its developer, M.L. Hubbard, it was the county's first shopping center. Over the years, tenants have come and gone, but the community barbershop has been there since day one. We still do it the old-fashioned way, and by that I mean as a real barber. People call ourselves barbers nowadays, don't do what a barber does. They're not barbers. Uh, by that I mean trim the ears, the eyebrows, the nose, mustache, lather up and shave around the ears, uh, ask the customer how he wants his hair cut, and, and try your best to give it to him what he wants, you know. Old-fashioned customer service can be found from one end of Lakeside to the other. It's a place where even filling up the gas tank can feel like time travel. Even in the, the late 60s, early 70s, it was it seemed like a gas station every 100 yards. It was 13 or 14 on the long Lakeside Avenue. This is a country in love with the automobile. Any corridor that really saw a lot of development post-World War II is going to be really heavily influenced, punctuated with a lot of gas stations. Well, I started here in 58, quit in 62, and come back in four, uh, 70. In 1958, it was the Gulf Station. Gas prices were 14 cents a gallon. We had a war across the street with a Sunoco station, and we dropped it down to 7 cents a gallon for about three or four months. And that day, it would never happen again. Come on up here, sweetheart, and I'll see if I can get you taken care of. We have a, what you call a, a neighborhood business. When you welcome the person in, it's the biggest part right there. When the people come in there with the full service, that means we uh, check the oil, clean the windows, uh, check the tires, uh, basic things like this. And a smile, as you go out there with that smile, that makes the biggest part. This is how the people treat each other. They, they see each other, they say hi, they're, they're honest, they're open. And there's so much going on in Lakeside now. I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, opportunity here for growth um, and for the future. It's kind of like a neighborhood, uh, you know, knitting itself together, you know. I mean, it, it, it's gone through your ups and downs of any, any avenue is going to, especially one that's as old as this one. And people are, are knitting it back together again, storefront by storefront and, and house by house. And, and uh, it's, it's fun to live in an area that is uh, it's, it's energetic. You know, it feels energetic. I'm certainly energized by it. The fellow that owns this shopping center, Peter Francisco, has done a lot to build Lakeside back up to what it used to be. For a while, it, it was going down. And uh, you've seen some empty buildings here and there. And it, that's going away now. You're, you're having most of the businesses and most of the buildings are, are coming back. Uh, Pete has uh, opened the farmer's market, which will open in May. They're going to have that here this, this year again. There are entrepreneurs here in Lakeside that are making things happen. Well, our goal with the farmer's market was two things. It was to uh, give something back to the community that was educational and at the same time to provide economic development for the area too. And um, everything we were reading was that farmer's markets were good things to do that. Well, I think this is a great community over here in Lakeside. Uh, I'm from Hanover County, and uh, this is my first time at this market. And I'm very pleasantly surprised with the response I receive uh, when people design local produce. I think that's wonderful to support our community and support the uh, local businesses here. So I'm very, very impressed. Uh, looking forward to coming back now. Uh, <laughs> I'm just excited. We take it personal. You know, I, I'm a third generation farmer and I just love it and, and we're just trying to take it to another level right now. Every week, you can see it growing. It's new vendors that come out and all the produce is local. Um, and these people, are, they're bringing what they grow and it's all fresh and wonderful and it's making the, the neighborhood feel like a community again. 
I think the Lakeside Market offers um, the customer and the vendor the opportunity to meet face to face. And there's just a small town neighborhood kind of feeling with the whole concept of a permanent market here at Lakeside. Our farm is in Western Gushan County, we're in a rural area, so we don't see a whole lot of people out there. But here it seems like there's a, a revitalization of that neighborhood spirit. And that's something that we lack out in, in the country. We don't have that opportunity to, to uh, see a lot of people. Here, people are bringing their kids in strollers and walking and bicycling to the venue. And they're just so grateful. And I think that Sharon and Peter have done a fantastic job of bringing together people from the neighborhood and others and just making it a larger circle for us all to be together and to share. The best part about the whole situation is most of the Lakeside families and people try to do their shopping in Lakeside. You know, they try to keep the thing going. Saturday night is the loneliest night of the week, unless you're in Lakeside. And our broadcast is about Lakeside, and it's from Lakeside. Lakeside is a very interesting place. It was, and it still is. If you haven't been to the north side recently, you really missed it, believe me. It's kind of a, a quick little mini vacation or a, a getaway that is just right in your own backyard. Once people come here, they come back again and again. I think it's been coming along for a number of years now, and it's finally getting to a point where people notice it. Yes, we are a community. We are getting back to the the things that made us a community in the first place. Yeah, I'm really, really proud of that because it looks like, you know, the old days are kind of coming back again the way it used to be in Lakeside.